Hi everybody, we are here today with a really inspirational gentleman. His name is Benjamin Allen. Benjamin, I really appreciate you being here today and uh, having the courage to share your really amazing story. When I get a, a, you know, shared this with people, that people that have experienced that kind of grief or, or that kind of death, there's a, there's a psalm that I like that says, deep calls to deep. And what I, I have found through this journey is to find people of like mind and similar journeys to go into the, to the depths, because that's what it's about. I just got so sick of trivial pursuit. Mm -hmm. I got sick of people looking for things and, and trinkets, mm -hmm. and it's not about trinkets. You know, what's the next shiny thing? What's this? And, and when you come across someone that has really traveled a path of depth, it, it resonates, and so that's another gift that I've received from this whole experience, are, are people of like journeys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm mean, speaking of just stripping away and, you know, getting just raw and, and naked through this. Mm -hmm. You learning how to love completely openly and unconditionally. How, has your life changed since then? Where are you at today? You know, it takes its toll, and and, and I still journey through a lot of sorrow. Right. And what I what I found with that was that if I could love that deeply, then I can love again. Not that I don't want to love again, but I want to be there. And I find that it's kind of like living in a parallel universe. It's like the mundane, the motions of this just wear me down mm -hmm. terribly. Once someone has actually I mean, to their soul, experienced unconditional love. It, it seems that nothing even comes close to it. No. I mean, nothing hits love on that kind of a realm. Yeah. So tell me, um, once you started, did, were you able to live that way? Or was there moments of, you know, in and out, loving unconditionally, being very closed-hearted, I mean, tell me about the waves and the roller coasters of emotion. Oh, you know, the, the, when when I was traveling through this, it took a lot to to move into that experience. It was always it was always on offer when I was with Matt. Whatever we were doing, wherever we were going, even before we found out he was terminal, there was that kind of absolute joy in play. There was just it was phenomenal. But with the world around me, there was a lot of anger. I was I felt robbed, I felt betrayed, mm -hmm. I felt I lost my whole belief system, I would lost everything. I was quite bitter. And, and part of my bitterness is, is using humor as, as a deflection, mm -hmm. as to keep people away. Oh, that was your, your yeah. safety zone. Yeah, your protective was my, mechanism was to laugh yeah, absolutely. and cover it up. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I don't know if I've, I have been able to translate that kind of love in just the day-to-day uh, surface dwellers. When I'm surface dwelling, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can really do that well, mm -hmm. you know, because there's a part of me that always is, it's like a parallel universe. It's like, I, and, I, and you see people that speak that language. You can touch people, you see it in their eyes. You, 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 when you walk this planet, you see the people that aren't surface dwellers. Mm -hmm. And that's where I gravitate, but we got to play the, the trinket game. You know. So before all of this happened, you mentioned earlier that you had always lived and loved holding back a small piece of you. Right. Um, do you do that today? Do you live and love with small pieces held back, or are you just open and free now? You know, I feel like I've been given the choice more to do it. Do I do it? Uh, by choice, I don't do it. Uh, and just normal circumstances because it's just not warranted and and but when somebody comes in that has experienced that kind of depth that's where i can go immediately mm -hmm. that's where i find it mm -hmm. i find it with people that, are, that really are serious mm -hmm. about life and i'm not talking about seriousness and heaviness right. i'm talking about really with intentionality want to lean in and engage with life mm -hmm. on, a, on a deeper level i can get there like that because that's that's what I honor, and that's what I like when it's honored in me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to open up yourself on a level to where you have remarried, or are you, you know, mm -hmm. like where are you at on, on that kind of a level now? Yeah, no, th that really was a, a journey that I, I went on. I I took about a year and a half, and and just just to be, and uh, that that has been. Um, 
I wanted, I had nothing left, so what I wanted to do was simply observe the grieving process in my own being and to be, to, to lean into my life and say, this is what's left, now what's left. Mm -hmm. And so, in, you had to dig deeper, okay? That's deeper. not enough. No. Dig deeper and find something else to keep you holding That's on, right. keep you hanging on. That's right. One more day, one That's more right. hope. That's right, and, and, and it was to do that. I mean, just for an example, I'll, I'll come to your, your question, but just for an example, before I uh, spread the ashes of, of Matt and Brian, I was walking along the Golden Gate Bridge because that's where it happened, and that's where Lydia and I were. And, and right before we moved from San Francisco, we went to the, uh, the pylon closest to the city, and we had this nice romantic kiss. And then we left. So I am in my touching all the memories, touching all the places. And it's really, grief takes a lot of energy, but a lot of intentionality mm -hmm. and it, to lean into life. And so I was, I was walking out well, there. Well, to lean into it instead of pulling back from it and right. going deeper and right. deeper and deeper away from it. And which doesn't get us anywhere. Right, right. It, you really have to, yeah. um, you know, charge and find some kind of inner strength inside yeah. of you that you never even knew existed absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely that's and and it does exist you can find it <laughs> that's right you, you you can find it if you have the will that's right that's and right the drive to and and for me it was more of the the letting go into okay this wave of grief would come mm -hmm. i mean there were times when i was in a fetal position and i could not breathe and I would just be sitting there, and it was just like, okay, and, it, and I knew it was going to pass. I knew it was going to move on. And every time, after the first time, when I did not resist it and let it happen, I came out of it with an expansion of the heart. And you opened so, up a little more. A little more. And mm -hmm. so every time they would hit, I mean, it would hit me places to where I would just curl over. And I just, I didn't know when it was going to hit or how it was going to hit. Or what would trigger it. Or what would trigger it. But when it hit, I would say I'd lean into it and say, I'm going to ride this puppy. Yeah. You know, I'm going to ride it to its finish because it expands the heart. Yeah. And I don't want my heart to contract. And so that, to answer your question around, have I ad, ha, been able to mm -hmm. move into life in love? Yes, I've remarried. You have. Yes, I've remarried. And, and it was that, it's that kind of love. It's that kind of, it, and it took a lot. It, it, and it still takes a lot because there's there's always remnants but part of it is the fear of loss mm -hmm. is is am i going to lose again mm -hmm. and and i really had to with intentionality embrace that says so, yeah there's always that possibility mm -hmm. but if i'm able to love like that with matt then i'm able to love again and i have found someone that i love like that and I have found someone that, that it, there's, there's an unconditionalness that, that can arrive because it is deep calling to deep. Mm -hmm. It's because there's, there's someone there that, that lives in that kind of space mm -hmm. that, uh, that makes it easier to, to be real. As you're talking about, and to get naked. And getting naked. <laughs> to get naked. That's the bonus. Ah. <laughs> and nudge, to get nudge. naked. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, Benjamin. So I always finish every interview with one final question. Okay. And that is, what is your truth right now? My truth right now? I would have to say, I was just thinking about this earlier. I was having a chat with someone of, of great depth. And I was thinking, what is the measure of my moment? How do I measure this moment? Mm -hmm. and, and, what, and, and, and to what space do I create? in this moment mm -hmm. and that that is my truth is that that to find the expansion of the the parameters to go beyond the the uh, the the boundaries mm -hmm. the uh, my truth is that what's on offer is far more than what i am often i often experience so what is the measure of my moment to expand to those places where i've never been before mm -hmm. internally and externally well, Benjamin, I absolutely am thanking you sincerely for sharing yourself. Thanks. For the willingness to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and uh, the courage to share your story in, in front of all of our viewers. No, thank you're you welcome. so much. And thank you for being a, par being a part of this and being so real. It, it means that's how I could go there, is because you were so real. So thank you. I'm merely a reflection. <laughs> thank you.